we, as a veterinarian, not necessarily a bird vet, you get exposed to all kinds of things. Um, and when you're living in Melbourne, metropolitan area, there are a lot of birds that we don't see every day, yet they're around. You just got to look in the right places. So working in Melbourne, we've got a, a falcon that's been brought in today. So it's not something that you would expect. And this, this, is, this was found a few kilometers away from our practice in the middle of the Melbourne metro area. If you look at it from here, you can already see that the one leg is, the one leg is um, clenched. So there's a neuropathy in the one leg and the wings are not held symmetrically. It's just awesome for us to have the ability to have one of the fastest living creatures in the world in the clinic. Um, and they're just awesome birds. It looks like it's probably been traumatized recently. It still looks pretty good. So we, we, we obviously don't know exactly how to handle falcons, but we're aware that they can bite and they've got strong, they've got very strong talons. So we want to avoid getting a talon on one of our hands because they can squeeze really tight and obviously you want to avoid the beak. Um, the general rule for all you watching is if you've got a thick tail like this, almost anything can be handled in it. If you stop on the side of the road and there's a possum, a thick tail to lift is a, is a great way to go. Or a cat or a... I keep a thick tail in my car and I, 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 tons of times I just stop, I catch the animal in a towel and bring it to work. So remember... I was at a wedding recently, there was a massive spider, I just basically grabbed a large cloth and just picked it up. But that's the kind of thing you can do, we can't really get bitten through the towel. But I've still got to be careful because um, obviously falcons are uncommon, I don't see many of them. But even when I wasn't doing bird veterinary, when I started off and someone brought a grey heron into the clinic, they've also got large beaks, you've got to just watch and um, use common sense. So let's see, let's see how this little guy's going to, going to handle um, the towel. On. So, just the same as with parrots, I've got him in the corner of the cage, as gently as I can, I've got a towel around him. Um, he's probably never been exposed to humans before, so I don't want to... Um, um, and we're going to take him to a little... I need a bit more space, Miles, so I'm going to go into it. The foot's completely mangled. It's infected, it's mangled, and we're going to lose... So this toe needs to be amputated and then that toe is okay. So it'll end up with two digits still functional. So the question is, is this bird able to be released into the wild under those conditions? Uh, tip of the beak, Phil. First of all, the muscling is still good. So maybe this is a recent thing. Tip of the beak, as everyone can see, is damaged. The top of the beak's not there. The tip's mm. missing. And we'll try and look at the wings. And I just want to obviously... I mean, just how awesome, how beautiful. To see one of these creatures is just phenomenal, the way they fly and to have one to hold one is just, um, it's just awesome. So in the back of my head I know this bird can't be released, but I know that if, if it can fly there's, but, but there's zoos and there's parks that might take these birds, I don't think, I, I don't know which species of falcon it is or brown falcon, brown, how uncommon it is, but I mean this wing, this, this particular wing feels okay. Just look at this. Just mm. awesome. So I'm feeling the elbow, uh, sorry, the wrist, the elbow, the shoulder. I just don't want that foot to get around my hand. So what we're going to do in the short term now is we're going to weigh this bird. We're going to get some nutrition into it, get some fluids into it, get some antibiotics into it, and we're going to get it off to Hillsville. Um, we prefer not to do the euthanasia ourselves uh, if there's a chance that they can save it. People want to see falcons, maybe they've put into their collection. Um, but uh, to come close to close with such awesome beauty that we most people never ever get to see. And as you know, like falcons are the fastest, one of the fastest species of animal. And we can't consider birds animals, even though they're birds of living animals in the world, the speeds they get to. So this is awesome for us. And we can only do so much if, uh, if, it, if, if the zoo doesn't want it or a collection doesn't want it, it may not have a good future. But we're going to try our utmost um, to save it. Remember, vets get tons of wildlife. You've got to appreciate when you take a wildlife 
because we were a bit extra in the area, and they put a lot of their own time and resources trying to save things. And uh, obviously we get spiritual and emotional reward doing that, but you've got to know there's a cost, and there's only so many cases we can see a day. We work close with Wildlife Vic, as you know, a volunteer organization, but be very explicit with them. They can't send us all the cases. They've got to share the love or share it with all the vets around. Although we're happy to see a couple of birds because we can do a lot more than most regular clinics, and we do. Um, we, we, we have a, a There's multiple good... wildlife cases every day. And we release. We had a release of a, a noisy minor on the weekend, which is beautiful, back to its parents. So we, we do have really good cases. But remember, life's about quality of life. It's not about uh, longevity or just being alive. And uh, we'll do our best to, so as carers or, or, look or, or custodians of this planet, between us and the caring nurses and the whole facility, we'll do the best with this little guy. But he's got the best chance of quality. <laughs>